everyone and welcome back to the series on how to build your own rock buggy so uh, today we are doing episode number six and we are going to talk about a few things so basically I'm going to show you now that I, uh, I positioned the uh, the subframe of the buggy on the chassis table and then I'm going to start uh, mounting a few different uh, items on it so in which order do you start mounting the different items and then I'm going to talk to you about something really in, uh, important as well, and that is um, nodes in the chassis. So where are you supposed to put a node and how uh, do you position a node in order to add strength to the whole chassis? So basically, I'm going to start off with <clears throat> by showing you the picture of the, uh, of the frame. So the frame is, uh, the uh, the main subframe is all completed and done. And I position it basically on the welding uh, chassis that I have at the right height that I had set pre uh, er earlier. And then I um, <clears throat> I basically, I mean, this might, might sound silly, but um, I like to position the seats first. I know a lot of people, a lot of other builders, builders don't like to do that. I like to do it for... A couple of reasons. The first one is uh, like if you think about it, the seats after the drivetrain and the axles, the seats are the biggest uh, items that you are going to put uh, in the in, inside the buggy. And obviously, they want you want the seats to be as as um, comfortable as possible. Uh, you need to set the, uh, the the position of the seats as good as you can get it. So basically, that's why you see that I positioned the seats uh, right behind the engine. Obviously, it took quite a bit of uh, trial and error, right? So I basically, I, I at first, I just used some 2 by 4 pieces of wood. I laid out the seats on them, and then I tried to figure out, okay, what is the farthest distance back uh, behind the engine that I can position my seat while having my feet uh, comfortable in front of me? So basically, my right foot uh, is as close, you know, it's 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 almost probably five or six inches right behind the back of the of the left head uh, of the on of the engine. So so this is where I'm going to position my my gas pedal. Uh, so after I, I figure out that position, this is where I, I set my I, I put my seat in the on, on the two by fours and then I moved it front and back and try to sit on it try to see where it's comfortable so I after I found the right position of the seat I basically start making uh, tabs and the tabs for the seats uh, you can get away with uh, a quarter inch tabs so I set them all in place uh, you might notice here you know the tubes are on the sides are unterminated uh, I kind of figured, you know, it's fine. I'm going to leave them like that. I'll terminate them later as I'm building the chassis. However, I did make a small mistake here. It's because I had welded completely the, uh, uh, the tabs on the, on, the, uh, on, the, on the tubes that are running uh, across side to side of the buggy. And that, that was a mistake. I, I normally like to kind of, you know, when I'm sure that I finished a section of the buggy, I, I like to weld it and finish it. Uh, some people don't don't like to do that. Some people, you know, just tack weld all the tubes together, and then when they're when they're done uh, building the whole chassis, this is where they take everything apart. They weld it all in one or two sessions, probably twelve hours straight of welding. And you know, I've I've done that in the past, but you know, I, I, I if I'm hundred percent sure that I'm I'm not going to change the position of a particular tube, then I'll I'll just weld it. But normally, what I do is. I normally tack weld like a, a section, like the back end of the buggy. I'll tack weld it, make sure everything is good before I weld it all in place. In this case, I made a mistake, and afterwards, uh, after I, I I connected the the both sides of the buggy, so quite a bit down the road in the in the build, uh, the tabs for the uh, seats were kind of they were not fitting the seat tabs anymore. So I had to cut off two tabs and reweld them. It wasn't a big deal, but you know, in hindsight, hindsight I, I basically I should have just stack welded the, uh, the the brackets for the seats. All right, so uh, now uh, I, I make sure I also you might notice that I actually made sure that the uh, the coolant lines are, are are running nice and 
and good where I want them. And uh, I did that for the front of the engine first. And then uh, you can see I positioned the seats. So one of the important um, things that you have to think about positioning the seats is uh, the width of the cab. So for the width of the cab, you know, it's, it's, once again, it's a matter of preference. I like the cab as narrow as possible and for obviously reasons, you know, I don't want to hit trees and I, I don't want the cab to extend too much, you know, cl too close to the tires. And, you know, the narrow cab also allows me to see the tires as many tires, you know, as I can, you know, front and back. And it also, you know, clears the rocks on the side, etc. So I position uh, my seats as close together as, as possible. So for the seats, what I wanted to tell you is, uh, from experience, I recommend that you, you invest in good seats. Uh, I mean, if you're building a trail buggy uh, and you're gonna spend six, seven, eight hours a day driving it, uh, it's, I think it's important that you have comfortable seats. Uh, to me, I went with um, with PRP seats. They are good quality seats and they are custom ordered as well. So you can pick whatever fabric and color that you want. And the really nice thing about these is that they have removable bottom cushion. So the water is not gonna pool at the bottom of the seats, which is nasty. I've had that in the past in other buggies. And the other nice thing about these uh, PRP seats is, is they're fairly tall in the back. So so your head is actually at the same level as uh, as the back of the seats, and this to me is is is, is important because because if one time you get a, into a situation where you're you you kind of whiplash, and then you want something supporting the back of your head if you if you hit it backwards. So it's important to invest in good quality seats, and it's important also to put them as close as possible together. You can see that both of these seats are almost touching in the center. And I was gonna run also the outside tubes uh, fairly close to where the tube, uh, where the seats end on, on, on either side, on the outside of the seats. So after the seats are done, uh, basically what I do is I, I, I want to mount the radiator. Obviously I knew from the beginning that I wanted the radiator uh, behind the seats, but I also wanted, I didn't want the fans to be throwing hot air at my fuel tank. Uh, I, I don't like that scenario, um, I, 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 especially because I knew that it's going to be a trail buggy. So I knew that I was going to be sending, spending a lot of time driving during the day. So, so what I did is I basically tried to mount the uh, the radiator, you know, low in the chassis. I mean, but you have to be careful here. That you have to make sure that the top of the radiator is actually higher than the top of the engine because when you're going to be filling it with coolant. Uh, you want the rad cap to be the highest point. Obviously, you can you can um, you can go uh, you know uh, uh, raise the back of the buggy. Uh, I mean, I do that also when I fill it with coolant and I lower the front. That will help as well. But you want to make sure that you don't have any air bubbles in the uh, in the coolant lines and the coolant system. And you might notice also that I was also a little bit afraid. You know, what if my drive shaft breaks and I don't want the drive shaft breaking and then hitting the uh, the top of the radiator so that's why i kind of built some stronger than normal supports uh, in order to kind of prevent the drive shaft from you know if it ever breaks uh, hitting the uh, uh, the radiator so once uh, all these uh, <clears throat> are done i basically can start piecing uh, uh, the uh, the sides the both sides of the buggy and uh, you might see that i mean i didn't do them in one uh, single uh, tube. I mean, it was it was uh, a whole bunch of tubes that I connected together, which brings me to my to my next point that I need to talk to you about, and that is nodes. All right. So uh, for the nodes, so I assume you have uh, two tubes. Okay, this is uh, one of the tubes, and this is the other one, and you want to connect them together somehow. Okay. Obviously, you have to cut them and make sure that. Uh, uh, they're nice and flat and what I do also is I add a little chamfer on the side so I kind of grind the metal a little bit and then give it a little bit of a, of a V notch and then I can weld them uh, together however I want to let you know that I do not recommend for somebody to actually just leave uh, just weld two tubes like this together and leave them on, on, on the buggy just freestanding with no other support to me this is this is something that should not be done I've never done it on any one of my buggies. 
uh, I'm just letting you know what I have done. Obviously, some people might, might think that this is okay. Uh, to me, this is not okay. So every time, every time you have to connect two tubes together, what I recommend is, see, this is the notch tube from the last video. What I recommend is that you actually must have a node. A node meaning it's more than two tubes across at the same path. So this here, there's almost absolutely no loss of strength if you weld this tube here and then you weld this tube around and there's no loss of, of strength. You do not do that. This is not as good. I mean, it, it's the closer this tube is to where the, uh, the connection between the tubes, two tubes are, the better it is. I strongly recommend that you leave it like this. This is not okay. Now, what happens if you have now a, a bent tube? So this is a, a bent tube here. So if you if you need to run like part of the chassis, another tube this way, for example, it's always better not to run it. So if you if you would connect this tube, if you would weld this one here, and then you have a bend here, and assume this is the top of the A pillar, uh, this is this is a problem because if you get if you roll and then you hit it here what's going to happen is this is going to bend really easily however if you bring this tube and you put it like this or even like like this for example okay so this is this is much stronger so this is okay this is okay this is okay but as the farther you are from the bend the worse it is so i recommend that basically you try to put the tube as close to the bend as possible this is going to give it enormous amount of strength and uh, if you hit it at the bent area, uh, you're not going to have any, any problems or, at all. All right, so now I, uh, that I have the seats uh, mounted in place and I know exactly uh, how they feel, I sit down on my seats and I make sure also I had to think about the angle in which I, I want to put my seats. So this is a matter of uh, personal preference. You could uh, set the seats to whatever angle, uh, vertical angle that you want. Um, I set mine to 60 degrees and I also set the rest of the chassis tubes to 60 degrees. So the tube that you see behind uh, the seats for the B pillar is actually canted to uh, 60 degrees from uh, the horizontal. Okay, so 30 degrees from vertical. And uh, I basically followed all the tubes behind uh, later for the back end of the buggy. I used the same kind of 30, 60 degrees. And that kind of gives it a really nice, smooth look, meaning that everything kind of fits together. And what I also did is I made, made sure that the radiator was tilted back also at the same angle as the back of the seats. So for me, it was trial and error, and uh, I was I was really happy with the, with the position, uh, with the 60-degree angle, and I, I do not regret it a single bit. Uh, so after that... What I did is I basically uh, started building the uh, the A pillar, the, the B pillar, as you can see here, right above my head. And once again, this is all a matter of preference, so you can you can do whatever you want, uh, basically. And uh, you see, mine is canted back quite a bit, but I was kind of looking. I wanted this kind of look that it kind of you know it's kind of a, I I was kind of looking for a muscle car, old school muscle car kind of look. So I wanted kind of a raised up hood with a, a very slanted back B pillar. And once again, this is all a matter of preference. So you can you can build it however you want. You can make it straighter if you want. But you have to remember something that if you decide to make it canted down, uh, so the more leaning down the A pillar or the B pillar is, the more support that you have to put to that A pillar in, or, in order to take a hit from the top. All right, so uh, <clears throat> that's... Uh, that's pretty much it here for the uh, for the uh, seats and the radiator. And then uh, after that, I, I pretty much just started with the front end. I uh, I mounted the uh, the winch, and you can see where I where I mounted the winch. I have uh, I have a, a, a three or four node uh, tube node that I, I use, and it's perfectly fine to do that. You know, you can have five, six, seven tubes all come together. You have to make sure that there's absolutely no gaps, though. So uh, this is one of the criteria. If you want to do a node like that, you know, filling with weld is 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 not going to to be good. So you have to make sure that it, the the tubes fit really nicely together. It takes a lot of trial and error, so you have to be patient. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, 
remember that I'm building my chassis at, at full compression, so I wanted the, uh, the the kind of the tubes where the uh, winch was mounted to be as close as possible to the top of the uh, Rockwell, right? And this was one of the criteria. I wanted my buggy to be low to the ground. And then after that, I, uh, I kind of finished the B pillar where I, I mounted the cross supports. And you have to remember the, the B pillar must be really, really strong so it can with, withstand rollovers, you know? Uh, so uh, it, it seems from the picture here, there's a lot of X's and crosses, you know, and uh, lots of supports. And this is going to give it a lot of uh, strength in case of a rollover. All right. And uh, finally, before I finish, uh, I just want to let you know that there's something that I that I do. So some people might ask me, so how do you come up with the design of the tubes? You know, how, how you, you know, did you did you use a computer program? Actually, I did not. Uh, I had I had the option of using a computer program. I could have used a computer program, but I wanted to freestyle it, uh, meaning I had an idea of what I wanted to do, but I wanted to kind of see how it flows as I was building it. And it turned out pretty happy. However, however, you have to know that I spent a lot of time thinking of how am I going to do or connect some of the tubes. So I'm showing you a picture here. These are drawings that I, uh, do freestyle you know i i just, I just i'm not i'm not, a, not an artist at, at all so i just sometimes i'll be sitting down and then coming up with a few ideas so so as you can see some of them resemble quite a bit uh, my current uh, buggy so uh, so they do help so if you can just take a piece of paper and just make some shapes on it and see you know what do you like what you don't like it kind of saves you from having to do the tubes, bend them, notch them, install them, and say, oh, no, that doesn't look exactly what I want to. So this is kind of saves you some time. And finally, I, I, you can see here the design of the front end that I ended up uh, using for the, uh, for the chassis. All right, so uh, that's it uh, for, uh, for uh, this episode. Uh, obviously, the uh, next episode, are, we're going to continue with uh, the rest of the components and I'll give you advice on some of the other components uh, that, I, that I installed. And uh, especially, you know, for exhaust, uh, I, I, I thought long and hard about the exhaust and what I wanted to do. And I want to I wanted share later on my ideas about how you should run an exhaust. I've had some really horrible experiences with my previous buggies where the exhaust was running too close to the cab or to my feet or to my passenger feet and the temperature would be extremely hot at the inside. So I wanted to mitigate that problem and I think I was successful in this buggy and I'll let you know what I did. Uh, and I'm running exhaust all the way from the front to the back of the, uh, the buggy. All right, well, uh, if you enjoy these videos, once again, please like them and subscribe for more videos like this. We'll see you next time. Thank you.